Welcome to our homestead. Can you run a freeze dryer on a medium sized solar system like we have? We're going to answer that question today. Let's get going. So this is a brand new Harvest Right medium size freeze dryer and essentially it goes through four different cycles. We're going to use this kilowatt meter to monitor how much power draw each cycle has and then the total number of kilowatt hours used for the load that we're going to put in here. So we're not going to be dehydrating anything like a soup. It's just going to be apples, which are kind of mid-range in their moisture content. So I think it's a great baseline. And to give you an idea of what we are going to run this off of, these are two 5000 ES US model Growatt 5K inverters. And down here we have five 100 amp hour batteries and this gives us a total of 25,600 watt hours of usage. And then outside we have 20 440 watt solar ever panels for a total of 8.8 .8 kilowatts. So this readout right here will show you the percentage of the inverting power that's being used in the house right now. So you can see it's 4.1 to 4.5%. And then on our master inverter here, it is about a little over 5%. So besides monitoring the power usage, of the freeze dryer itself through every cycle, I'm also going to try to catch the percentage of our inverters that is used when the freeze dryer kicks into each cycle. Now, that might be difficult, and I'm gonna do my best because some of these cycles might kick on in the middle of the night. So once we hit darkness, if the drain on our battery is too great, I am going to switch over back to the grid and I can do that because this is an off-grid system and I'm still hooked to the grid and I use it as a generator. So it's just essentially flipping an interlock switch to go back to the grid. If I do that, I will add the amount of kilowatt hours used through the grid and break that out for you guys. So then you will understand if your system is big enough to run this. So this freeze dryer will run through four different cycles. The first one is the initial cooling down of the chamber without any food in it. And it will cool it down to 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It should take about 15 minutes. Sometimes it's a tad longer and sometimes it's a little bit shorter. After that, and you put your food in it, if the food is unfrozen, it will go through a freezing cycle. And that can last for several hours. It will freeze down to, I think, negative 25 degrees. That usually takes between two to four hours, depending. After that, the third cycle is vacuum freezing. Your vacuum pump will kick on and it will start to pull a vacuum out of the chamber. At that point, you're gonna be using a decent amount of power. That cycle shouldn't take very long at all. After that, we'll kick into the fourth cycle, which is the drying cycle. In the drying cycle, the vacuum pump will come on, the heaters will come on, on and off, and it'll fluctuate all over the place. But that cycle usually lasts quite a while, up to 30 hours in some cases. And if you're doing something like a soup, it's going to take longer than that. Now, last week I did some apples and the total cycle was about 26 hours. Let's go cut up some more apples. We're gonna get them in here and kick everything on. Now, Harvest Rate recommends that you do not go over the top of the tray, which is a half inch tall, but we're gonna keep our apple slices thinner than that, between a quarter and three eighths of an inch. And that's gonna allow for good even drying. Now, the drying time is also gonna be dependent on how juicy your apples are. So we're gonna plug in our kilowatt meter and we're gonna plug in the Harvest Right unit right into it. Now, we don't need a second one because the vacuum pump is plugged into the back of the unit. So it's just on standby mode. You can see I've got 120 volts. I'm drawing 0.06 amps, so pretty much nothing. And our watt draw is 3.1, and that's essentially just for the LCD screen that is on the Harvest Right. We've got Hertz, it's gonna be 60, of course, and no kilowatt hours obviously drawn so far. Okay, we're gonna start things here. And it's about 74 degrees inside. And it'll be about 15 minutes, give or take. Let's look at what we're drawing in terms of wattage for the initial cool down around 500. And our amps, were, we are at about five. Let's see what we're drawing on the inverters. We are between seven and 10%, 11%, kind of fluctuating all over the place on that one. And on this one, it's a little more stable. 
between 8 and 10 percent. The freeze dryer's cooled off enough as telling me to close the drain and put in the food. Let's see what we've used so far in that first cycle. So we're pulling 4 amps. We've got 0.13 kilowatt hours and we are at about 380 watts. Open it up, load our apples. Once everything's loaded, I'm gonna hit continue and it'll go into the freezing cycle. Let's see if anything changed on our kilowatt meter. Looks like we jumped up slightly to 0.15 kilowatt hours used. We're at about the same wattage and the same amps. So there really isn't much draw at all with the initial steps that could take three, four, five, six hours, somewhere in that range. So when you're planning out running this on your system, just be aware of the wattage and usage and times on all of the cycles, although it can vary. Just be aware of that and the other loads that you're using in your house if you have a smaller or medium sized system like I do. And just so you were wondering, it is a partly cloudy day. Right now, we've got full sun on the panels and should be producing really peak power right now. It's about one o'clock in the afternoon and it is, I don't know if you can see it, it's partly cloudy out here. So it does go behind, the sun does go behind the clouds occasionally. So we just hit the vacuum freezing stage. The vacuum pump has kicked on. Man, this beautiful thing is so quiet. And it took us four hours and 36 minutes to get there. Now, that is dependent on your room temperature. So if you're running one of these freeze dryers and you have it in an area of the home or say a garage or something like that, that's a warmer temperature, it's gonna take longer. If it's in a big open space that's cool, then it's gonna cut down on your power consumption from it because it'll take less time. So let's check the numbers on the kilowatt and on the inverters. Okay, so that took us about 1.88 kilowatt hours to get to that stage. We're pulling 665-ish watts, 670 watts at about 7.25 amps. And over here on the inverters, we're pulling about 13% of this capacity. And about the same on the other, it's about five o'clock in the afternoon. We've still got decent sun outside hitting the panels. And let's check our batteries here. And we are still within float range, so we haven't used any battery at all. We're hitting 98% on that one, 97%. So the vacuum freezing cycle just kicked over it and I am still on solar. You can see it's in the drying mode now at five hours and two minutes. Let's check what the kilowatt meter says. So when that drying cycle kicked on, it jumped big time. We're at almost 12 amps. We're pulling 1240 watts and we are at just over two kilowatt hours used. So this being a real world test, my wife just got home from the hospital and needed to take a shower. So our inverters just kicked it up a notch. Each one is using about 65% of its capacity. And that is because our old inefficient water heater just kicked on. So the sun is gonna start going down fast. We're gonna start draining a lot of battery power. I'm going to have to switch back over to the grid. So I'm getting ready to call it an evening and there's no use to drain the batteries down any farther. The sun has been down for about a half an hour. It's roughly eight o'clock and we are just an hour and 46 minutes into the drying process. Our batteries are doing well. We've got one at 72%, one at 57 and all the rest fall in between. I don't know why there's such an imbalance, but they're not gonna make it through the night. So we're gonna make the switch over. We're at about 3.55 kilowatt hours and we are still drawing 612 watts right now, not too bad. Our amps are 6.3. So we will take this 3.55 and add it to what we do overnight on the grid and then switch over back over to solar in the morning when the sun hits the panels and charges everything up and we'll add that number in also. That was actually pretty cool. I didn't catch it in time. It said previous job was interrupted. I just walked back in here from switching over. We're back on grid power and it restarted itself and it did a really fast countdown, about five seconds, restarted. So I actually did a test run of this same process a few days ago and the, like I said, the kilowatt meter died, but this time it didn't. 
So we're continuing, it's sitting at 3.57. So I won't have to add those two numbers together. But after I flip over to solar tomorrow, I might have to do that adding of numbers. We'll just have to find out. All right, we'll see you in the morning. Here we are this morning, and I'm about ready to switch back over to solar. We've got 13.3 kilowatts. We're drawing 557 watts, and we're at six amps. And we are in extra dry time on our harvest rate. We're at a total of almost 19 hours. So let's switch back over to solar from the grid power. So when I flip back over to solar, our kilowatt meter did reset. So I will add those kilowatt hours used on the meter to what we just recorded. And this did pause for a second, but just kept going. It's still in our drying cycle or our extra drying time. And we've got 30 minutes left on that. So it really should not draw that much more power. Over here on our inverters, same as yesterday, we are drawing about between eight and 10% off of each inverter. So really not that much. That translates to about a thousand watts. So during that drying mode on the harvest rate, it'll kick up. You see we're a thousand, we just dropped back down to 700. We were at 1300 a minute ago. It depends on what those little heating mats are doing in there. And that's where you get a lot of draw a lot of load dry out of your freeze dryer is when those heating mats kick on. So we've completed the freeze drying process on the apples. Everything is shut down and we gained another, let's see, 0.25. So add that to the 13.3 from before and we get 13.55 kilowatt hours used for an entire full load of apples. So we've got our apples completely done. Now you can do an extra step and defrost it. We're not gonna do that. We are going to let the ambient air temperature defrost it and just let it run out of the drain line. Keep in mind, if you do that, you're gonna use more power. Perfectly dry, like styrofoam, light as a feather, so cool. So can you run this Harvest Right freeze dryer on a small to medium sized solar system like we have? Well, maybe. And that's determinant on your battery bank because when the sun goes down and you're not getting any power back into your system, you're running straight off your batteries, you can't stop the cycles on this. You can't just pause it for 12 hours and start over again. You have to be able to overcome that with the size of your batteries. So your power draw on this is anywhere between 500 and 1350 watts and you're gonna need to accommodate for that in your battery bank. Or do like we did, keep your grid tight, your hookup, and use your solar system like a generator like we do, and then just flip it over like we did. Unfortunately, if your battery bank is small, then you're not going to be able to do this. I really hope that helped you out, and if you have any questions or I left anything out, let me know in the comments section below. Now it's time to package up these apples. Click on these videos right here to learn how we put in our entire solar system by ourselves. Have a great day. We love you. See you next time. Bye.